Welcome back and some more details on coding with C++, fun and games for all. We talked about the C out statement outputting to the standard output, which in the old days was called the console, now we consider it to be the monitor. Well, these guys right here are the insertion operators. They're the one that say insert into the output stream. And you can see we've got one string here, but we're not limited to one string. We can actually put multiple things on a line, allowing us to print a whole bunch of stuff. So if we wanted to say, hello world, and then maybe something like, how are you? We could come in here and say this, which now says, hello world. And then notice I put a space here and it puts a space as, hello world, how are you? And if we run this, boop, it builds it and says, hello world, how are you? Notice we only have it all on one line. There are some special symbols that we can use to, to make things happen on different lines. One way of doing that, of course, would be to do this. And end up with two lines of code that allow us to say, hey, Hello world, how are you? Probably don't need the space there. Another way of doing it is to use symbology instead of a new line of code. We have these things that are called command and control codes. This is one of them for new line slash n. So if I take that and run this code again, we actually end up with two lines between the lines of code. So if we only wanted one, we could have to basically go back to this. And now if you run it, hello world, how are you? We're back. So you can see the insertion operator allows us to drop in multiple ways, multiple lines of code, and put things out on the screen as we want to. So we can format things via lines of code or via symbols or however we want, whatever works the best for us. Now, even though we've got multiple lines of code, this thing is still just going to read and compile one line at a time until it figures, figures out what every piece is. Now, we don't need to worry too much about the details. We can put as many of these slash ends in as we need. We can put as many other things. For example, here's another one, slash t. If you want to care, care to guess, you can think about that for a second and see what it does. Otherwise, you can watch it run. It's a tab. It's a miracle. So rather than using space, 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 you can use tabs and other things. So this new line escape sequence and this tab escape sequence that we've got here are codes that we stick inside a line to help format things in a console to make it look pretty. Now, there are more symbols, symbologies we can use. Um, slash A gives you an alarm, or if you're in a Windows world, it goes beep. Um, slash B for backspace which causes the cursor to back up, which can be problematic when you're trying to print stuff. Slash R is a return that takes you all the way back to the beginning of the line and then overwrites what's there. And that gives you kind of what's going on. But let's say, what if, what if you wanted to put like a slash in your code? You'll notice that the slash by itself gives you this red underline, which is C Lion's way of saying that's not quite right. So certain pieces of code that you want to print, you need to pre 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 precursor them with that escape sequence again. So a slash slash will give you a slash. See, a slash. Now, if you think about it, if you wanted to put in another quote, you can see all of a sudden my, 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 my console says that something's terribly wrong here. That, that's, that quote quote is right there, but there's no quote to end this quote, which turns all of this stuff into a string. So the way you fix that is, once again, put a slash. And now you can actually see funny little characters showing up. And that's how you kind of control quotes and single quotes with all these specialized escape sequences. So that gives us the beginnings of some of the terminology and the symbology. The next piece of symbology I wanted to show you is this. This portion of the code up here, the, 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 the includes, is kind of your code setup. So oftentimes you'll include things that are necessary for your program, but you are kind of obtuse or not. But this setup area, 
you can actually use a slash slash as a comment, which means the compiler will ignore it and put a comment in to give any kind of details. Or you can even put your name, the date you compile things, that kind of stuff. Now, this gets kind of tedious when you start typing in slash slashes all over the place. So something we can do that makes life a little bit easier for us, this is your, these are called single line comments, is we can use a multi-line comment, which C lion will nicely terminate for you. Notice if you don't have this last slash, you, all of your program turns into a comment, and that's not good. But now we can put in information about your code, you know, your name, the day, the company, and it auto formats it for us very, very nicely at the top of our code. So single line comments and multi-line comments are useful for providing information about what's going on inside of your code. It makes your code a little more readable. Another thing might be is if we had a line of code that wasn't working, pretend like this one for some reason isn't compiling and we're not sure why, we can comment it out. You'll hear that comment which says comment out the lines of code that are broken, see if you can backtrack where that error might possibly be, and then go back and fix each line at a time. And if you've got a whole bunch of them, well, you put it at the beginning, you put it at the end, and you've commented out a block of code. Uh, these lines are fine, so we'll go back and delete those. And that gives you an idea of what's going on in terms of how to make your lines pretty and how to pretty up a little bit of your output, whether you need one line or multiple lines. Google has a standard for what they call their style of code. Part of that style says a line should not be longer than 80 characters long, so really long lines of code are considered bad, predominantly because you can't print them. So that makes it harder for you to see what's going on. In that case, most of us will go inside here, or at least I do anyway, and make multiple lines of code. Or you can do this. If you'll notice, the syntax and semantics of this line end when you put in the semicolon. If I don't put a semicolon in, and I don't put in the standard C out, I can actually have a line of code that wraps around. C++ ignores the white space that's here, and will treat this as one line of code. Hence what I said, the semicolon at the end of a line is not by line, but by sentence, so to speak, of code. So if we run it, it compiles and runs just fine. So this is, again, continuation on it. Next lectures, we'll talk more about variables. I'm trying to keep these short so we can cover specific concepts. But next lecture, we'll talk about variables and how to store stuff for a while. Because right now, everything we've got in our code is strictly right here and does not change unless you edit it and recompile and rerun your code. Hope you're enjoying this. Keep at it. Keep programming.